somebody just brought this to my attention the other day. Talk about Denzel made a, a Denzel made a video. He made a clip of him talking about. Um, I don't even know. I didn't see the clip, but they were saying how, you know, they're not gonna support him anymore. Uh, he was doing some fuckery, and you know, he's not standing with you know the Black Lives Matter community and all of this stuff. So I'm gonna tell you like this, man. Anybody, any celebrity with a lot of fame and a lot of money, you know, um, I guess it's normal for them to get out of touch with reality. It's normal for them to get out of touch with their people. It's normal for them to get out of touch with the neighborhoods that they come from, unless they come from a silver spoon. But if you come from poverty, you come from the hood, you know, you come from an urban community, you know, you shouldn't forget that. That's not something that you forget. It may not be something that you want to go back to. Excuse me. And I, I completely understand that. Who the fuck wants to make it and get rich and famous and then say, you know what? Never mind. Y'all can have all that shit. I'm going back to the projects. Who the fuck wants, who, who wants to do that in reality? So I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is, you know, when cats get money and they get fame, don't forget where you come from. Don't forget where it is that you come from is what made you. It is what molded you, what shaped you, and even put you in a position to where you got to where you was at today. Even if, even if it was for the simple fact of giving you the drive that you needed to get the fuck up out of there. You know what I mean? Get out of the hood, get out of projects, the bad community and shit, to get to a better life. And uh, so I don't care who it is, any celebrity, you know, with money and fame. It ain't cool to shit on the hood. It ain't cool to shit on where you come from. It ain't cool to shit on the people who supported your ass all the way up to where you at. But now you on this motherfucking little pedestal, at least that you think you on, and you wanna downplay and shit on the people who helped you, the people who supported you, people who watched your movies, bought your movies. You understand what I'm saying? You have to understand when it comes to celebrities, they're not celebrities because of everything that they've done. You won't even be a fucking celebrity, motherfucker, if people don't fuck with you. You understand? So, you know, whatever it is that he said, when they said that he disrespected the black community, saying whatever it was that he said, which I can't really speak too much on it because I didn't see the clip, but if he did say what they're telling me he said as far as him not being a supporter of the black community, him being more of a supporter of law enforcement, I'm going to tell you right now, I support the black community. I support law enforcement. You understand? The black community is a good community. Just because it's the hood or just because it's, 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 it's a poverty area, a lot of people think that, you know, it's all oh, so bad and it's just, you know, trash, the gutter. No, it's not. The black community is a beautiful community. That's a community where I come from. Those are my people. I connect with those people. You understand what I'm saying? Now, when it comes to law enforcement, all cops are not bad. You understand? All cops are not bad. You understand? Because I know some good cops. They have a job to do like everybody else. But for you bitch-ass motherfuckers out there, see, it's not even about the good cops. It's about the bad cops. You know what I'm saying? It's about the toxic cops. It's about the cops that are just out there to hurt people cops out there who just out there to imprison people instead of serving people instead of protecting people those are the ones that need to get the fuck on those are the ones that need to drop that fucking badge because you don't deserve it when you wear a, a, a cop's badge when you get that badge that's a badge of honor that's a badge of dignity a badge of respect a badge of courage a badge of integrity. If you don't have those things, you do not deserve to wear that badge. Simple and plain. So, all the good cops out there, keep doing good work. And uh, the thing with the good cops, though, where I feel like they get wrapped up with the bad cops is that sometimes, when or a lot of times, when the good cops see the bad cop doing something wrong, they don't stop it. They don't step in. And I understand, you know, 
when you are part of a, a, a crew, a clique, a gang, uh, what a team, whatever, you don't want to betray your teammate. But at the end of the day, we have to remember what your job is in the first place, to serve and protect the community, to serve and protect the community, not to kill, to wrongfully imprison, to mass incarcerate, that shit is not your motherfucking job. And if that is the motherfucking job, then it is a real problem. Because on the side of that damn car, I don't say that. I, I have not seen one cop car that on the side of it is said to kill, to mass incarcerate, to attack, to brutalize. I have not seen one cop car that says that. And that's just being real. And I know cops. I got a few friends who are cops. And on the side of that car, it says to serve and protect. To serve and protect. To protect and to serve the community, bro. Do your job. And do it right. That's how you get honor. That's how you get dignity. That's how you're able to ride in the community and people wave at you. That's how you get to the point where people don't have a problem with cops. When you motherfuckers start doing what you're really supposed to be doing, which is protecting the communities. Because in a lot of communities, that's why gangs were created. Gangs had to protect their own communities because the police wouldn't do it. The police were more, in certain areas and neighborhoods, they were doing more destroying the neighborhoods than helping the neighborhoods, than serving the neighborhoods, than protecting the neighborhoods. And for a lot of neighborhoods, that was one of the reasons why some gangs were created so they could protect their neighborhoods. Because what nobody else gonna do it. Let me answer some questions I got from some of my subscribers. Thank y'all, I love y'all, I appreciate y'all. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. So the first question, where am I originally from? I was born on the west side of Chicago, um, you know, west side, uh, Ohio, Mayfield area. You know, um, I lived on the west side when I was a baby, all the way up to like, five maybe like five and since then i was going back and forth between illinois and alabama illinois and alabama you know um and uh illinois we bounced from chicago to oak park to forest park i lived on the south side for a while um yeah man i lived all over man but back and forth between you know illinois and alabama you know shout out to alabama aliceville alabama Birmingham, Alabama, T-Town, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Those are um, some of my old stomping grounds, but I'm originally born west side of Chicago, but I claim Alabama and Chicago, so I'm a city country boy. Who inspires you to do music? Um, for me, I definitely gotta say uh, Nelly, 50 Cent, Tupac, uh, you know, those guys, Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne definitely used to play a big part in my inspiration and um, motivation to do music. So my top five musicians. Okay, Dead or Alive, we gonna go with. Hmm. Anita Baker. Anita Baker, Tupac, Lil Wayne, Sam Cooke. And Luther Vandross. Was being a rapper always your dream? For me, being a rapper was my dream since I was like 12. But before that, it was definitely football. You know, I wanted to be a football player. I wanted to be a running back uh, in the NFL. You know, I played uh, football, a lot of backyard football growing up. But, you know, I played Little League Baseball. So football and baseball, those were my two uh, main go-to sports that I wanted to do. And, um what I really had a real passion for and that I thought I was going to do in my life. But, you know, because I screwed up in school, you know, I messed up in school and I kind of screwed up those opportunities. Because, you know, in school, if, you know, if you don't um, have good grades and you don't, you know, keep a certain grade point average, grade point average and things like that and go to college, you're not going to be able to play. Uh, you, your chances of playing in the, in the majors are really slim. Um... So y'all yeah, would say that, um, but I started get, I started getting into music around twelve, 
I was like 12 years old. Um, and when I first started getting into music, I remember when I wrote my first rap, I was like 12, 13, I was 12, I was 12. Cause I remember I wrote it on the kitchen table and it was super whack. The rap was super fucking whack, but yeah. Uh, since I was 12 years old, I've been wanting to rap, so yeah, it's doing in that. Are you signed to a major label or indie? Right now, no, I'm not signed to a major label uh, at the moment. I did have uh, a label, you know, offer, put an offer out there, but the offer to me was kind of like uh, disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? Like as far as the, the money goes, you know, this is one thing about this music industry that I learned years ago, you know, and I watched enough biographies and documentaries to know this, but I learned that a lot of times in this music industry, people can be so in a rush and, you know, people can be so uh, focused on, you know, getting to that bag, getting money, getting rich overnight to the point where they sacrifice the long term wealth. They sacrifice the long term, the long term goal and the bigger picture. And I didn't want to do that. You know, I want to try to make sure that whenever I do sign a deal, that it is the right deal for me and mine. I got my own label that, you know, I'm pushing. And that's uh, ODC ENT, Off The Chain, Off The Chain Wolf Game, baby. Um, so, yeah, right now I'm the only artist, you know what I mean? We had a couple other artists who, you know, almost was on it, but didn't really make the cut. Not because of them not being talented, but just simply because of, you know, the business mindset. You know, if you don't have a business mindset, man, then I don't think you should be. This music game probably ain't for you because music is like 90% business and 10% music. So what are your thoughts on the rap game today? You have a, a, a few good rappers and you have a whole lot of shitty rappers. So I kind of feel like, you know, every decade has its time. Every decade, you know, the music in the 80s was different or not even music, but I'm talking about rap and hip-hop. Hip-hop in the 80s was different than hip-hop in the 90s. Hip-hop in the 90s was different than hip-hop in the early 2000s. You know, every year it changes, you know, so we can't really expect for the music to sound like it did in the 90s and the early 2000s. You know, these kids, you know, they got their own little vibes going. They got their own swag. And do I write all my songs? For sure. For sure. I write every song that you heard on any of my projects, every song that I've done. I wrote, you know, I don't rap something somebody else wrote. I can't, I won't do that. Because that's taken away not only from your creativity, but it's taken away from the the realness of the music. You know what I mean? How you real when you're telling somebody else's story. You know what I mean? Like, nah, man. You know, you know, we're artists as musicians, as rappers. You know, we're artists and, you know, you don't see you know, a painter who's an artist have somebody else paint it for him. You understand? No, you have to put how you feel on either that piece of paper or in that phone, even if it's off the top of your head. You got to speak what you feel. Straight like that. I notice you're a spiritual man. Do you practice meditation? Uh, meditation, I meditate. Uh, I pray more than meditate. I pray a lot more than I meditate, but from time to time, I meditate. From time to time, it's good to, uh, you know, cleanse, cleanse the spirit, cleanse the soul, cleanse the mind, cleanse the body. Just release, you know, all of those energies that, you know, you've been getting from people. All those energies that you've been holding in, you know, it's good to, you know, get those out in that way. So, uh, I pray more than meditate, but yeah, I meditate. What's my zodiac sign? I'm a Leo. I'm a Leo back, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm very stubborn um, and I'm very dominant. So when it comes to that aspect, that's true, but I don't know uh, all that other stuff about the Zodiac signs, but yeah, Leo. And do you have any advice for people chasing their dreams? Man, I'm gonna tell you like this, man. If you're chasing your dreams, bro, the number one key is to trust God. Trust him, trust his timing, trust his process. You know what I mean? And, 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 and be patient. You gotta be patient, bro. You can't be trying to rush everything because things are not gonna happen when you want it, the way you want it, the 
way that you had it mapped out in your head is going to happen when it's supposed to happen and how it's supposed to happen. So, you know, that's my advice. Trust God and to be patient. It's an interesting question. You know, I like questions like these. These are the type of questions that, you know, I feel stimulates the mind because it puts you in a position to where you got to think, you got to focus, you know, right off the ball. You feel what I'm saying? You don't really got too much time to think. So I kind of like this, but uh, if you were on an island and you can only listen to five albums for the rest of your life, what five albums would they be? I put it uh, five albums. And I like it because you said albums. You mean say artists, you know, artists would have been easier, but albums, okay. Number one, I'm gonna go with Kurt Franklin, Greatest Hits. Number two, I'm gonna go with Anita Baker's Greatest Hits. Number three, I'm gonna go with Luther Vandross' Greatest Hits. Number four, I'm gonna go with the Carter Three. And the last and final album that I jam out to. Um, I'm gonna say Jagged Edge, Greatest Hits. You know, I need some mellow while I'm on this island. All right, man. I appreciate all y'all. I love all y'all. And until next time, man. Come, come, come.